Uh, our last subject today, should 18 to 21-year-olds be banned from buying vapes? Health officials are looking at a possible ban on flavoured e-cigarettes alongside a higher age limit for smoking. The Irish Mirror called with Siobhan O'Connor. Morning, Siobhan. Morning, Stephen. How Morning. are you? Well, all the better from hearing from you, Siobhan. And Jason Reid, a Young <laughs> Voice UK commentator. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, Stephen. Good morning. So, Siobhan, let's start with you. Stop young people getting access to vapes until they're 21. Hard patronising, yeah. some might argue. No, I, I, I don't think so. Like, I have been addicted to all of them. Um, Nicorettes, the, the patches, the chewing gums, the vapes, the cigarettes, and they all lead back to cigarettes. So you'll only go for the vape. This is what my, my own personal experience. You'll only do a replacement for a short amount of time and then you'll inevitably go back to the cigarette at some point. They'll be out on a night out, like young people are, of course, and they'll all be out in the smoking area and there's the ashes have one. So it's kind of more the ideology behind the addiction. So if you're going to get addicted to something, it, be it a vape, be it a nicorette, be it a cigarette, they're all leading to one way, one kind of, um, the, 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 the biggest evil, which is the nicotine. Yeah, well, Vinny said to me here, if you look at the flavours of these things, gummy bear and strawberry and mango, it, the, the flavours are aimed towards young people. I'm 48 and I love gummy bear. So I don't know <laughs> what he's on about. Uh, Jason Reid, what's your view on this? I think it's very dangerous to be going down this road. We're seeing more and more uh, nanny state regulations of this kind coming through and it's just going to end up in some kind of miserable dystopia where, oh, you can't eat that, you can't drink that, you can't smoke that. We're going to end up eating grey sludge before we know it. Uh, when it comes to vaping in particular, uh, this is being pushed by the World Health Organization as part of its tobacco-free initiative. But all the science says that vaping is by far the best method we have for helping people quit cigarettes. And so this being part of the tobacco-free initiative is absurd. I think it's easy to conflate nicotine addiction with tobacco addiction, and they're two very different things. The health risks from vaping are about 95% lower than they are from traditional cigarettes. So switching from cigarettes to vaping, which is what we're seeing people do in huge numbers, is definitely a good thing for people's health. And to be cracking down on it is a little bit ridiculous, I think. There's nicotine yes, in these things, was, isn't there? Pregnant, when, I was, when I was pregnant, the doctors were all against nicotine. They said, you can't have those cigarettes anymore. They said they're really bad. They higher your blood pressure and everything. Why, Jason? I'm no, me I'm no medic. But. Why should society not protect now that, that it has a chance before they get addicted to nicotine, try to stop young people getting addicted? Because there are still lots of people who are young smokers and that number is going down, but there are still lots of people who are addicted to cigarettes and vaping is the best chance they have to quit. Um, you know, governments all around the world, in addition to the World Health Organization, are talking about the importance of making um, society smoke-free. And vaping is by far the best tool that we have to do that. And more fundamental than that, than that I think it's an issue of freedom. If people want to be uh, smoking or, or vaping, I think they should be allowed to do that. I don't know what right you or I or the government or anyone else have to say, no, you can't do that because we've decided that it's not good for you. Final word to you, Siobhan. But Jason, think of the NHS and think of all the pressure then from all the smoke-related illnesses that are going to end up in the hospital. So I think it is all of our responsibility to stop it. As a former smoker, I swear to God, the nicotine was the hardest thing to crack. And once you stop being, get rid of that addictive substance out of your life, you're better off. So I, I think young people are better off. I, I am clearly, Siobhan, addicted to the prong cocktail salt on the crisps. <laughs> like, clear, clearly I am. You know, you're... <laughs> You're giggling, Jason. I'm telling you, I could lick all day. I think that's stunned, Jason. Well, there you go. That's exactly the problem. You can say that about anything, can't you? You can, you can ban unhealthy food. You can ban alcohol. You can ban anything which uh, causes people to uh, yes. need to make use of the NHS. Yes. But we don't do that because we want to find a balance between people's freedom... Uh, and people's health, and I think this falls on the wrong side of that balance. Jason, thank you very much, Siobhan O'Connor. Thank you very much. I think Jason Reid there is maybe used to a posher show. Doesn't encounter presenters telling him he's <coughs> addicted to licking crisps. Poor Jason. Thanks for your company today. We'll see you tomorrow, Connor. Come <laughs> snakes, bye bye. <laughs>
How am I how am I supposed to follow that? In in all honesty, how how am I supposed to follow that? Stephen Nolan quote of the week. I could lick all day. Welcome to Stand Alive. It's been a long 18 months without live music.